Hello everyone, Benny here. Welcome back, and in this video we'll be adding some memory to our computer, which currently isn't much of a computer, just sort of an AOU. But before we do that, I'd like to go I'd like to talk a bit about the AOU because I made a few changes to it. Um first off, as you probably can tell, I did just extend these wires out. So you probably know how to do that. Secondly, I replaced all the repeaters at the bottom with these sort of wire squiggles, and the reason for that is it's going to make it just a little bit faster. And um, finally, I added a fourth bit to our AOU. So we're now handling four bits of information, rather than three. And the reason I've decided to go with four bits instead of three bits really has to do with graphical processing, which is still a fair ways down the road, but when we get to it, it's just, um, graphic processing's a lot easier when you have a 4-bit computer as opposed to a 3-bit computer. And, um, that's basically why we chose 4-bits. So, anyways, with all that out of the way, let us begin. So first thing we need, if we're going to add memory, memory works from having, from being able to control buses, at, at least in the sense of RAM. So we're going to go ahead and add those buses. And memory is one of those things where it is a little bit harder to explain than it, it well, explain while you're building it than it is to just, you know, show how it works or explain afterwards. So, I will be posting a video, or at least I'm planning on posting a video after this, about the how and the why of all this. So right now I'm just extending out my four wires, and, yeah, four lines. And by the way, in case you didn't know, these giant wire, or excuse me, lines of material with some, um, with redstone on top, they are called zero buses because they're taking information from one part of the computer and sending it to the other. In this case, it's sending it to RAM. This is going to be our bus for any information we want to write to me memory. Right now, it's just going to be RAM. Eventually, it's going to be all forms of memory because we're going to have more than one type of memory in this computer. So, um, yeah. So, you have to extend all those out, put some wires on it, and guess what? You have to fill it in. I have a shortcut for filling the redstone. In case you know, we'll have that set in the number code for redstone, which I don't have memorized, but it's 331. And, it's, uh, I, my shortcut is FR, and I'm just going to use that because I don't want to spend the rest of the video of me just filling in redstone. So, yeah. Oh yeah, one more thing, we are going to be way holding off on adding repeaters to all these wires, so anything that's not working because repeaters aren't there, we're going to be worrying about later. Okay, now, here's the thing about information. I if you want to process information correctly in a computer, you have to keep all the same information grouped together. Right now we have four bits of information coming from our ALU, and that four bits of information must always stick together. If it doesn't, you get a little bit of an issue known as data corruption. And that is very, very bad. So, to avoid this, we're going to do all of our data in groups. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this little diagonal thing with wires. Or, excuse me, with redstone torches. And we'll have wires, too, that will go under it. And what this is doing is... Once I add this all in, what it's going to do is it's going to essentially just take the information, rotate it 90 degrees, and point it this way, and at the same time it's going to invert it. And the reason we're doing that will become a little bit clear later. But for now, um, just, just uh, you guys have to take my word for it. It's going to be what works. So. Okay, now, now we have all the information inverted. So if I power any of these wires, like these two, or these two, then we get the same information just inverted and flipped, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to have to go ahead, and, since this is writing, we're going to have to plug it into the writing part of memory. Now, so I'm going to load the D flip flop, which I called D flip, and paste it. And I'm just going to paste it along. And again, in the spirit of keeping all this information together, this is coming, for the most part, in just one connected wire, because this is going to be the writing command, if you remember from the last D flip flop video. 
So we're just going to go ahead and keep these connected because we're going to want to write in sync. Now we are going to have to. Uh, we can go ahead and add the writing bus, but I, I think I'm going to go ahead and add more than one memory location because essentially, what this is, since we're grouping this information together, even though we have 40 flip flops here, it's only really holding one piece of information because those four bits of information, yes, they are four separate bits, but they're associated with each other. We're grouping them together, and for that reason, we are going to have to. You, this won't be four bits of me well. This won't be four bits of memory we can write to separately. This will just be one piece of memory for the entire computer. That's not really what we want. So I'm going to add four pieces of memory, and the way I'm going to do that is first off, we'll basically have to repeat this thing down the line. And also to make this a little bit more clear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually I'll do it a little bit later. But what I'll eventually do is separate all these out so it's pretty clear which one is which. Actually, I can probably just use world edit. Never didn't really think of that, so I'm going to see if this works with world edit. And if it doesn't, well, let's just really, really hope it does. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to stand. Um, I'll stand right here. Copy and paste and wow that actually works this is going to save me a whole bunch of time except it's cutting off that um cutting off the end of the line there i'm pretty sure yeah it is okay so this is that's not intentional that's not good i can sort of fix that i guess I'll just have to do it manually, unfortunately. But that's a small sacrifice for having being able to do this so much more efficiently. And since we are doing four bits, we, or excuse me, four memory groups of four bits each, which totals 16 bits, I'm going to sort of um, just copy it four times. Yeah, I'm sorry, a bit of brain fart there, but we're good now. So, I'm mm, sorry. I ha I suggest you do your selection properly so you don't have this same issue. <laughs> but, um, okay. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain what I do next while I sort of mark these areas off. S just for clarity purposes. So, what I'm eventually going to do right now, what I am working on, excuse me, not what I'm going to do, what I am doing, is... I'm sorry, I find it really hard to build and think at the same time, so I might have a few sort of just lap thought lapses, I guess you could say. So I'm just going to apologize that ahead of time, even though I guess it's kind of late for that, but oh well. I'm, I'm sorry, I think I will have to just say it separately, because I don't think I can build this while I'm thinking. So I'm sorry, I have to build and think separately. That's the person I am. And... Okay, that's um pretty much everything separated out. So, okay, I've built everything, I've separated everything out. Now, I can sort of explain what's going on. Okay, when well our first bit, what we did is we rotated it 90 degrees and sent it into the memory. Since we are doing that exact same thing basically over and over, the same information is still going down this. This does not disrupt the information that's actually traveling on the bus. So we can do this safely and still get the same information to every single bit of piece of memory. And what we can do after that is, if I'm, I hope I did that right. I hope this isn't just screwing up. I'm sorry, I got a bit distracted there. But what we can hopefully be able to do is have all the same information sent to every single memory piece all at once. Now that probably seems counterintuitive at first because wait, I thought the idea was to have different places I can write the memory to, so I can choose where I want my memory to be stored. And yes, that is the idea. But the difference is. The information, just because it's going to the memory, doesn't mean it's being written. And that's why we have our friend the writing command. And we're going to set up a little system of control of being able to select and choose which one we write to a little bit later. But um, that's basically how this works. So next thing, we're going to have to add one to at least every single one of these wires. And we're going to go ahead and set up the writing bus. Excuse me, not the writing bus, we already did the writing bus. I mean the reading bus. So the way this will work is I'm pretty sure I'm doing this right. I'm pretty sure, but I could be completely wrong. Though I really hope I'm doing this right. 
basically just setting the whole thing up like this. You want to... I'm sorry, my video cut off, but basically what you're doing is this. You're setting up this diagonal thing except with wool, just like we did before, because we were doing the diagonal thing to sort of rotate it 90 degrees and put and invert it. And that's exactly what we're doing, except in this case we're transferring it upwards in the process rather than downwards. That's why we're using blocks. And you want and in order to make this work, you need a torch on the end of every single block, not on top of it. You can put it on top if you really wanted to, but I don't suggest it. So now what we can do is just this. Connect the all the wires into the um, into the boxes. You have to do this all the way to the end. I could have probably copied and pasted this, but I decided not to. So, oh well, too late for that. Now, what we have to do is we have to make the act the wires for the writing bus, which go like this. Oh yeah, and the distance of that I put these at is important. So if you did it a different distance, you um might want to go back and fix that. So okay. Now I just have to extend all the wires out. And if I get it fast for that. Whoops. Don't hit. Okay, I can't hit any faster, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make this go as quickly as possible because I don't want the whole video to be extending out stuff. Okay, there we go. Now, now what we should get might be a little bit odd, but you'll understand in a bit. I'm just I will have to explain this, unfortunately, but that's okay. So now we're going to again fill everything with redstone, and the wires are on, but that's okay. So fill with redstone. And if one isn't on, that's okay, because it will be on next time you update World Edit. And there you go, everything is now on. So, you might be wondering, okay, since this is supposed to have the same information that we get from this, why is everything on? The reason is, when we're writing to memory, we're doing it a little bit odd, because we're actually writing the inverse to memory. And since we stored all of our memory blocks as if they stored nothing, since now that's being inverted, since we're storing the inverse, we're getting all ones. And so that's not a problem, if that made no sense to you at all. It isn't a problem, so you don't worry too heavily about it. But, and since we don't want to always be reading it, I'm going to add a little control wire. A, not a little control wire, but a control wire. And it's basically going to be the exact same thing as... Actually, no, we haven't done something like this yet. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I thought we had done something like this, because these type of things are pretty common. One, so basically, put a torch over every single wire along the line, and now what we want to do is just want to break it off at every four torch, so that each four torches corresponds to a memory block. And there we go, we have most of the RAM system set up, Though it's not entirely done yet, actually, what? Well, okay, I guess it is almost pretty much entirely done. I'm, I'm sorry. So this is basically the ramp system. And again, if you, I didn't ex go too heavily in explaining it. I sort of just so add what is, not too much about why it is. So um, let's go ahead and test this out. So right now I'm going to put a lever on every writing and reading controller. This is the reading controller. This is the writing controller. And what these will eventually allow us to do is choose which memory address we want to read from and which ones we want to, s to save to, so that we aren't, aren't limited in our choices. Now right now I have nothing, so I want to write that to every place. So I'll just flip all the switches down, and we've written absolutely nothing to memory. So if I, un so if I try reading to any memory address, it's going to be nothing. So, let's try writing something, and the, not all these will necessarily reach, so, okay, that reaches the first two, so I'm going to write a 1 to the first memory block, and the second memory block. 
and now that's stored in memory so I can break that torch and if I hit this hey look that rose lit up because it's reading the wand if I hit this that rose lit up because it's reading the wand if I hit this we didn't write to this memory block so it's still holding the zero now if I put another value like this and okay that does reach I can write that to block two now if I read from block one I s excuse me I just did not mean to do that so I'm sorry if I read from block one we still have that one there which I unfortunately had to put back because I screwed up but that's okay now if we read this one we get a different value because we stored it to a different value in memory so it is indeed keeping all of our information organized and separated and we'll be able to get any information we want from any point at any time. And that's the reading and writing buses in memory for now. We will be going a lot deeper into reading and writing buses. We will be able to have a whole bunch more plugging into all of these than just the ALU. And we will eventually use these to enable us to build a pretty powerful computing device. So, with that, thank you. I will see you in the next video. Oh yeah, and in case you didn't catch it earlier, I will have a video going into a deep explanation of how this works. Thank you, see you in the next video.